In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a Gantt chart, but not just a regular Gantt chart, so to speak. A lot of people make Gantt charts that do not change. They're just pretty much a static timeline of what needs to be done when. But I feel it's a better idea to make a Gantt chart where the bars will actually change colors depending on how many days you have left. So if you have a chart and you have a project that should take five days to complete, and you're already three days in, the three days that you're in should be a different color than the two days you have left. So you know that you only have two days left when looking at it. It makes it easier to read and also easier to know when you should be done with something. So first, I'm going to simply create some data. And I'm just going to have five project tasks. Then I want a start date, and I want an end date. Now I'm just going to change these so that there will be more of a range on the graph. Now let's enter some end dates. Now let's enter some more columns. I want to do days completed. days left to complete. Total days to complete the project. So now we have three columns. Days completed so how many days have you completed of your timeline for a particular project? How many days do you have left to complete this particular project? And what is the total amount of days that you have had to complete the project? The final column that I'm going to create should simply just be called a non-negative column or non-negativity. And <clears throat> I'll explain um, why you have the non-negativity column in a second. The next thing you want to add is a place for today's date. And the formula for that is very simple. Just do equal sign, today, open, close parentheses, enter, and you have today's date. Now you'll notice that I did put a few of the projects as starting before today's date, and I only did that to illustrate exactly how the Gantt chart that I'm going to create will work. Now the next column that we're going to fill in is the total days to complete. That's a very simple formula, equals, and we're going to use the end date, and then subtract the start date. So we're subtracting the start date from the end date and then we're going to copy that down. Now it should be noted here that I have numbers in this column, but that's only because I have the column already formatted. If the column was not formatted, I would get a date format here and it would look very funny. So if you do get that format, all you have to do is highlight this column, right click, Go to Format Cells, then go to the Number tab, and make sure under Category you have Number selected. Also, where it says Decimal Places, make that 0. By default it's going to be at 2, so just make sure it's 0. 
when you run it the category should be selected date so just change that to number with decimal place to zero click OK the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to fill in the non-negativity column now what you wanna do here is to put an if statement a little bit more complicated but not too hard equals if open parentheses and if today's date is greater than or equals to the date for project task one then so comma today's date minus the start date for project task one otherwise so comma zero close parentheses now before you hit enter make sure that the cell reference for today's date is locked so just put the cursor in front of it and hit F4 or put a dollar sign in front of the B and in front of the 10 for me it's in cell B10 so just make sure you put the dollar signs in front of the cell reference now you're gonna do that because you're gonna copy this formula down and you want today's date to stay the same so copy the formula down the next column to fill out is going to be the days completed column. So what you want to do there is another if statement. We're going to equals if open parentheses. Now here what we want to do is if the non-negativity formula is greater than or equal to the total days to complete then comma we want to use the total days to complete as the result for days completed otherwise if that is not true we want to use the number for the non-negativity formula then we're going to close the parentheses hit enter and now drag this down so you can see here we have five four five zero zero so what this does is it makes sure that the days completed number is never going to be higher than the total days to complete number. The final column is the days left to complete column. So we're going to fill that out with an equals if open parentheses and now here what we want to do is if the total days to complete minus days completed is less than or equal to zero then we want the value to be zero otherwise simply subtract or simply do total days to complete minus days completed end parentheses enter Now this column is very important because it's going to allow us to create a chart that is dynamic and changes with the date. Now what we have here is all we need in terms of data. So we can actually start to create the chart. And uh, as you may have noticed it's kind of complicated to create a Gantt chart this way just because of all the if formulas etc etc. But it's actually not too difficult. Um, one thing you should probably do is create the data for one project task first and then simply use the formulas here and copy them down when you create other project tasks so if you do that it's going to make it much easier to add as many project tasks as you want as opposed to actually typing the formulas in every time also it'll make sure that everything you do is consistent so now let's move on to actually creating the chart.